this is a bit of an unusual video for me. Not part of the things I've been doing lately. Not an essay, not a retrospective, nothing like that. Not a primer even. This is just me talking about some cool games I saw. If there's one thing I like about Steam, it's those moments where they highlight upcoming games, putting them on the spotlight usually reserved for the big AAA titles or other major releases. Steam Next Fest is one of those occasions, giving tons of upcoming games a chance to shine for potential buyers before they likely get buried under the mountain of other recommendations from the algorithm. Of course, the most important part is that every game on the fest has a demo available, a chance to get something concrete in the hands of the players and see what the games actually have to offer. I'm a big demo guy. I'm from an era where demos were commonplace, where you could find shareware demos in magazines. So yeah, you got demos, I'm all for them. I played a bunch of demos for this fest, though I missed the opportunity to play a few. Got a bit late to the fest and started getting through the games at the tail end of it. So while a few games had demos well past that, some were very much demos with a time limit. Out of those I played, the following are my favorite. I've broken down the list into genres. First RPGs, then roguelikes and metroidvanias, and lastly the adventure games, which make up the bulk of the demos I played. Mind you, this is not a ranking, but having said so, there are a handful of them that get a gold star from me. Albatross. Albatross surprised me with everything it had to offer, and it gets a gold star straight up. The introduction is wonderful, you're in a car with a beautiful landscape, and then eventually you get out of it and start hiking. And that's when you discover this is an RPG. You get different stats for like hunger, thirst, but also your legs and your arms, and you can upgrade them so you don't get hungry as easy or thirsty as easy. You can walk for longer or carry more weight. It's awesome. The best thing about it that kind of binds the entire theme is that the experience is based on exploration. You get traversal points and that's the experience with which you level up. And then at some point while you're exploring, you get trapped in a mist and then see a kaiju. So yeah, Albatross, I'm there for it. The demo was amazing. It did everything it needed to do. So gold star for me and I can't wait for it to release. Cabernet. Cabernet is a fun one. It's very much a point and click adventure game with RPG elements. And the RPG elements are skills like science, literature, the humanist arts, and how charismatic you are. And they're defined not with points at the beginning of a character creation, but in the narrative, you're a vampire. So the game starts with your funeral and your uncle speaking about you and the choices you make and how he remembers you and what you did in life define those skills. And then, of course, during the game, you level up and increase them further. And those skills open up possibilities in dialogue or different actions. There's also a nice little thing of humanity versus nihilism, which is very much like a morality system, and normally those put me off. But the fact that there's a difference between being more human or keeping your humanity and just being a fatalist nihilistic bastard is really interesting i really can't wait to see what this game has to offer when it releases sword of convalaria i debated with myself whether to include this game in the video it's a solid tactical rpg really great mechanics and everything but it's a gotcha game the units you can summon in battle gotcha there's also different currencies, and I'm fairly sure some of those might be premium. Not to mention, your progress in the game is limited by your energy, which is such a Facebook game thing to do. And so it's a solid demo, solid game, but everything around it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Still, your opinion might be different than mine, your millage may vary, so I'll put it here. No gold star. Terra Memoria. This one is cute. It's adorable in its presentation. Cartoonish visuals in a world with humans and anthropomorphized animals that also are part of the civilization. Primarily rhinos and foxes and wolves and that sort of thing. You control mages, a sorcerer who's kind of considered kind of the village idiot and a summoner whose spirit abandoned her. So, you know, top party. The game has a few faults right now. It's very hand-holdy, 
and it interrupts the flow of play every time you complete a objective in a mission. Having said so, the combat mechanics are really cool because you have support members that attach randomly to an active member of the party. Active members being the ones that have spells and actions. The support members, what they do is they modify your spells, giving you the chance of turning, for example, single target spells into multi-target spells or turning attack spells into healing spells and healing to attack. It's a fascinating approach to party composition and despite what I don't like, I'm keen to see how far it goes in the full release. Menace from the Deep. Menace from the Deep is um, Lovecraft meets Slay the Spire. That's very much it. The core gameplay is your character, a member of an order that has taken over the town of Innsmouth and is researching an artifact called the Heart of the Sea. You are an agent of that order or the class you pick as an agent of that order. You have a class more or less like the character type in Slay the Spire and the gameplay is Slay the Spire. Same rules, armor, uh, tokens, cards, everything. It's the same gameplay. On it adds its own little flavor to it, which is really cool. And the other members of the order, some really nice NPCs. And I'm very interested to know what the plot is like, what the full story is going to be like. There's really a lot of potential here and I'm dying to see more of it. So this one, gold star. Realm of Ink. I love Wuxia. I love the genre, basically Kung Fu fantasy. I love it. I love it a bit. I adore it. This is Hades Wuxia. I don't need to say anything more. It's a Kung Fu inspired Hades. Not to mention you have a pet and the combination of powers you take change the shape of the pet, giving it new abilities as well. So it's Hades, Kung Fu, and Pokemon all together, and I love it. So yeah, obviously Gold Star. Awaken, Astral Blade. Mixed feelings about this one. Nice, kind of cyberpunky world. Your characters are a bionic girl. Coming in to rescue some folk. There's a crisis, an emergency. Combat is fine. It does have few fun mechanics. The bosses are interesting, but the animations for this game are a bit stilted. They don't have the fluidity, the smoothness that I'm looking for in a good Metroidvania. Tight controls and smooth movement is what I need. An Astro Blade is giving you only one of them. I hope it improves before the final release. Mendasium or Mendasium, whatever it is. Fun little Metroidvania. You control a lizard guy with a spear and a cube. The cube is your source of magic. It's where you get your spells. You use your spells from it. You start with healing spell, which is great. And your spear is phenomenal. It's a great addition to the genre. Because when you attack normally with it, you're in melee range. But at some point, after a certain number of attacks, so you go from being Alucard to Samus in your gameplay. And that's pretty cool. Not to mention, it has that Souls-like thing of when you die, go pick up your body. But it shifts you to an ethereal realm. And you're very much just safe from everything while you're in that spiritual realm. You can, of course, revive at the save point, but you can still go back and get your stuff. Not to mention there are some items you can only pick up in the spirit world. That's really ingenious. Tales of Kinzira, Zao. The first time I heard of this game was in the Game Awards. It weirdly enough had critical role among its developers or publishers or something. You play as a shaman who's made a deal with the spirit of death that in exchange for a task, he'll bring the shaman's dad back to life. The shaman fights with two masks, sun, which is melee, and moon, which is ranged and crowd control. Really fun switching between the two, some nice combat, and the best thing about it is that the abilities you unlock are really fun. The first ability you unlock with this moon mask on this demo is the ability to freeze water. So you're already climbing waterfalls at the beginning of the game. That already has me excited to see more. Ultros. This game has actually just released last week. Really fun, very psychedelic and visuals. I swear to God, whoever designed this was high on LSD for the duration of the development process. Very, very fun to play, uh, mostly melee character. In fact, I'm kind of missing ranged Metroidvania characters at this point. Everybody is melee, but the movement is fun the abilities you get are fun and the combat is actually pretty engaging combat is primarily around dodging and timing your dodges to counter attack 
And then, you know, when you kill monsters, you eat them. Yeah, you eat them. That's kind of fun. Deviator. Some games wear their inspiration on their sleeve, and I'm fairly certain that the creators of Deviator love Hollow Knight. The environments look straight out of Hollow Knight. Even the character's movement is like Hollow Knight. But this game has its own little thing in the combat. It's primarily around parrying and counterattacking. You actually build up a bar, and on your next parry, you get powered up and deal more damage and generate healing charges, which is pretty fun. And then you dodge only specific attacks, which open the monsters up for another counterattack. So combat can get really fast if you know what you're doing. My only concern with the game, and it's because the final boss of the demo is really difficult, much more difficult than the standard first boss of a Metroidvania, is the fact that they're going for the usual thing of, we're unique because we're harder. And I don't like that because there's a fine line between challenging and stupidly difficult. And this is feeling very close to stupidly difficult. Crypt Custodian, an interesting Metroidvania that is actually isometric, top down. You play a cat who's just died, which is sad, but you go to the afterlife and are about to meet the goddess who will send you to paradise or kick you out of her fortress into the wilderness with all the other rogue spirits. On the way to her chambers, you find the broom and start, well, let's say, cleaning the place by destroying things. And so she's not happy and kicks you out, making you the janitor for the overworld forever. It's pretty interesting. Um, the platforming is fun. And, you know, an isometric uh, perspective. The combat is simple but fun. The abilities are interesting. Having said so, of all the different Metroidvanias I played, this is the one I'm least interested in. I don't know why, just the mechanics seem a bit shallow, even in just the demo. I could be wrong though, and when the game fully releases, I'll know for sure. Emberbane. Let me get something out of the way. I hate Emberbane's visuals. I am very tired of Metroidvanias or action games with pixel graphics. Please, let's move from the NES era and go into the Super Nintendo or Game Boy Advance eras. Let's make games look prettier now, please. With that said, everything else about Ember Bane, I am in for. The movement is fluid, it's fast, the platforming is amazing, the combat abilities are so much fun, and the demo gives you a lot of them. It's very much Avatar inspired. You will have different elements at your disposal and from videos I've seen of the upcoming game, stuff not in the demo, at some point you move past the initial fire powers into other completely different elements. And you use those powers not just for combat, but also for exploration and even some puzzles. It's a really good game, really fun. And I'm looking forward to playing it fully. Again, hate the graphics, but the game is good enough, even in spite of them. Chicken Police Into the Hive This game is a sequel to the very fun Chicken Police Painted Red, where you play as chicken detectives Sonny Featherland and Marty McChicken in the city of Clawville, where all sorts of animal people live. And when I say animal people, I really mean humans from the neck down and then animal heads on top like Egyptian gods. It's really fun because the animals are photorealistic. It's hilarious. And it's a noir game. And the mood, the style, the music, it's all wonderful. Into the Hive has the characters go into specifically the hive, a part of town that is reserved for lizard people and insects. And it's kind of like a slum, a rundown part of town where really bad things happen and its citizens are really discriminated against. So it's a part of town that doesn't really like Clawville police. In fact, there isn't a precinct in there. So our heroes are really jumping into danger on this one, lethal possible danger. And the demo is long. It really introduces the entire thing and leaves you off in such a place, kind of a cliffhanger, where you need to play more to know what's happening. Cyber Manhunt, New World. I played the original Cyber Manhunt, I think last year or a couple of years ago. Fun game where you kind of hack into employees of a company and other folks to solve some crimes and some rather creepy or weird situations. It's kind of like a study into technology and privacy and all of that. This one goes even further and introduces and deals heavily with AI technologies and the power they have and what they are capable of. 
really, really fun stuff. The cases are really interesting. And the first case already in the demo, not the tutorial, but the actual first case, has not only the main objectives, but also hidden secrets you can find that add to the world building. I'm very much looking forward to this one, Gold Star, Demon Masquerade. To be perfectly honest, there isn't much of a demo for this one. The demo is super short. There isn't really too much to say, except you play as a subject in a study, an experiment perhaps, solving puzzles for the person taking care of you. You solve some puzzles of increasing difficulty, including looking at the evidence of a crime and figuring out who did it. And then a couple of characters appear out of nowhere, say more than they should have, and your caretaker disposes of you. So I don't know if the game will feature you just with a lost memory, or if you're gonna be playing another character altogether, or even if your characters are disposable and you're gonna be playing through multiple of them to piece out the story. So I'm intrigued and I'm gonna be playing it when it releases. Death of a Reprobate. This one, if you've ever seen a Monty Python thing, a, mo a movie, uh, the series, anything, you're gonna be into this game. The humor is there. It's very much Monty Python-esque, absurd, ridiculous, over the top. It's phenomenal. And the art is inspired by medieval European paintings. Very much looking like a Terry Gilliam art. So more Monty Python. This is in fact the fourth such game from the developer. And it's the first one that I've actually played. And now I'm gonna go back and play the other ones before this one releases. The situations are just ridiculous and over the top and I just want to see just how crazy it gets. Deep Under, another short demo. This one has you playing a barista who's picked up by his best friend, his childhood friend, to go with her boyfriend and a couple other friends out to hike in the woods. They, you know, start partying, eating barbecue. Then a couple of them move out to have some herbal um, refreshments and they disappear. And then everybody starts getting worried and look for them and you find their bodies. And then a monster shows up and then all of them fall into a dark hole. And that's it. That's the demo. Mind you, the presentation has a few other things, but overall, that's the demo, like a 30 minute demo. But what happens in it is enough that I want to see what the hell is going on. Because the visuals are striking. They're really creepy at times. At one point where they're having fun, one of those herbal refreshments is a tea made from local mushrooms. And the character drinks it, starts getting woozy, looks to the friend on his left, and sees her like dead with a slit throat. So creepy as hell, I want to know more. Detective, Ritual of the Sea. The first of the straight up detective game. You play as a detective arriving at a scene of a crime, a dead senator. And you need to figure out what happened. Everybody around you says uh, he did himself in. But you have to find the evidence to see if that's true or not. And you have a case board and you piece together the evidence to form conclusions and then, you know, put together conclusions for different hypotheses. It's really fun. Having said so, the demo does kind of fall into that thing of clicking on anything with anything that point and click adventures get to. And primarily for me, it was a thing of I knew how a few pieces of evidence connected to each other and what the conclusion was, but it wasn't the conclusion or the combination of evidence that the game expected for that conclusion. So it was basically my logic versus the game's logic. And I do hope that the final game has a bit more nuance in the deduction or the different pieces of evidence connect to each other in a more intuitive way. Duck Detective, the secret salami. You play as a down and under duck detective whose wife left him for his addiction to bread. Yes, bread. You get a case and you have to investigate it. Duck Detective is a fun adventure game. It's really cute to look at, very adorable character art. And most cases and mysteries are just sentences that you need to figure out the words for. Like they're incomplete and you need to figure out the words and where they fit. And you do so by investigating the environment and the characters and getting the information you need to fulfill the conditions. Like finding someone who's sad and then putting in the description, in the text, finding their name and then putting this person is sad because 
of this other reason that you also find in the environment. It's actually pretty interesting. And I do hope the final game has a few more complicated scenarios. Then again, the demo is only the first few steps into the case. An English haunting. I said I'm tired of pixel graphics in action games or adventure games or Metroidvania games, except point and click adventure games. You can throw me pixel graphics any day. I've played some games with very low graphics, like really highly pixelated visuals, and they're all fantastic. This one is no different. You play a British professor in a university with a partner and in his own department, the existence of ghosts and the supernatural. There is a grant given to the department, but your partner stole it and vanished. So now you're trying to both piece together where he went and what he did. And at the same time, they've given you an ultimatum, 72 hours to prove the existence of the other world. So you're scrambling to find evidence and the demo itself doesn't show you that much. It's fairly straightforward and just introduces the circumstances. But the kind of trailer that plays after you complete the demo shows some really wild scenes that I can't wait to play. So I'm looking forward to this one. Gold Star, Gestalt, the fifth day. Another short demo, black and white, pixelated, horror game. You play as a woman who's moved into a house that she knows is haunted and you're there dealing with the supernatural. Like you turn on the TV and you see ghost faces in the TV. So there's gonna be likely a lot of jump scares in this game, but even without them, the atmosphere is so good, so engaging. I was clenching the entire time. And that is just the first day. The demo is the first day and there's five in the title. So I'm looking forward to playing it and discovering what happens on the fifth day. Lumen Knight. This game is very much like Danganronpa or Phoenix Wright. Kind of game where you find evidence and then you present them to interrupt some theory or some hypothesis or some accusation. The difference is in those games, you're kind of playing a lawyer or someone in a court setting. In this one, you are an actual detective. So in addition to the normal bits and bobs that you find for the objection parts, you also have to investigate things deeper and find different bits of evidence that then form the bits and bobs you use to interrupt others. The first iteration of this is with your partner, who's convinced the crime is one thing, and then you use the evidence you found by looking through the body and their belongings and everything and circumstances to say, hey, you're wrong. This is a murder case. But later on, you're investigating something else and the evidence just gives you the clue to a puzzle you have to solve. And it's a puzzle you gotta solve with pen and paper which I'm excited for. I love it when a puzzle game makes me pick up a pen and paper or make notes. That's when I'm happiest. So gold star for this, I'm in. Pacific Drive, another game that's just either about to release or just released. You are driving down a highway and then get teleported into a strange zone where the laws of physics are more like guidelines. They can do whatever the hell they want. Even matter doesn't know how to be matter anymore. So your valley turns into a swamp, then into a mountain, then into a desert the next day. You don't know what's gonna happen. But you find another car, get in and get to a garage, and then find out that this car is some special thing that exists in this zone and is somehow bound to you and might eventually take control of your mind. Yay. So you're sent out there by people to find resources to maybe escape the zone, as they call it. And you find materials and blueprints and stuff to fix your car and get further and further. Normally, I'm not in for the survival games, but I like the concept of it because it's kind of like driving stalker. It's stalker with a car, stalker cart, maybe. And you only have to keep track of materials and fuel. No hunger, no thirst, none of that. You just have to worry about the car and improving it. And I like that. It's it's a simple way of doing survival things. So I'm good with it and I want to see more. The Posthumous Investigation. One gold star, two gold stars, three gold stars. This is the best demo I played in the fest. You are a detective and one of the richest people in the city has died and sent you a letter posthumously to investigate his murder. 
The catch? You only have the same day to prove it. You are trapped in a time loop. At the end of the time loop, you visit the ghost of your client and you all try to piece together what happened and he can give you hints and then you can use the hints and the knowledge from previous loops to get advantage over other people in the loop. It's really fun, really interesting, and I want to see more from this game than from any other game that I saw the Steam Next Fest. I really want the possible investigation to be out now. Prim. Prim is a fun, very cute looking game. Black and white, really exaggerated visuals, really good humor. You play as Death's daughter, but you have been summoned, charged, with protecting a young boy in the living world. But Daddy Death won't let you out. So the demo is all about bypassing him to escape. First finding the door to your room and then distracting him or, you know, stuffing some herbs in his pipe to get him sleepy and so you can move out. It's a really interesting game and one that from what I was reading was supposed to come out a couple of years ago and it still hasn't. So I'm really hoping it releases this year because it really looks fun to play. And the demo includes a trailer with the developer speaking. So you can tell there's a lot of passion behind this project. And I really want to see that passion pay off. Threshold of Awakening. This game has the honor of having the shortest demo in the entire Next Fest. Of all the games I played, this one has the shortest demo, about 10 minutes. But the way it begins is enough for me to say, yeah, I need to know more. The main character has a nightmare about her husband who went to Tibet on orders of the CIA years before and disappeared. In the dream, he appears before her and is moving his fingers towards his mouth. There's a flash and then you see him with mangled fingers and a deformed face and she wakes up startled. She wakes up startled and then gets a call telling her that there's gonna be a call from Tibet later that evening. So she goes to work and then comes back and is told by her mother-in-law that her husband is dead, but she has to go to Tibet now for the funeral. And be sure to bring that amulet that he gave her because it's important. And that sounds just suspect as hell. And that's all I need to get me going. Creepy nightmare? plus the metal yeah let's do it let's do an amulet let's do some eldritch stuff let's do it tokyo psychedemic the last demo i played and the last game i'm talking about here i almost gave up on this one the intro is incredibly long it gives you the full intro of the game and sets the story in this alternate universe where a pandemic hit killed everybody um someone in japan found the cure and they became the new prime minister then a psychic cult did some terrorist things and because of them uh the government and police forces no longer hold case files so people deal with their cases and the information using aliases and couriers which is really weird and have deep web like sites where they kind of mingle together and investigate crimes but what really sold it to me is that the evidence you find despite the game having a fully animated presentation like all the characters are drawn the evidence you find like videos of camera footage or photos or everything else are presented using real life footage basically fmv more or less so you're tracking a victim through their walk across the streets and you get footage from CCTV on the street where you can see him. The scene of the crime is real. So you can actually look at things and read them. So that combination of reality and art is incredibly fascinating to me. And so I want to know more, I need to play more. So that's a list of games. If you think you like one of them, just go play the demo if you can. I'm sure you will not regret it. And if you do, come tell me in the comments. I might do this in the future with other demos if I play them. Um, I like playing demos, as I said, and you know, it's a good way of seeing new games. But well, that's it for me. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.